There's a lot that goes into replicating 16 or 35 mil film just because there's so many different characteristics that are contributing to the film look and so many different factors that affect the final result of your image such as the negative stock, the way it was exposed, the print process, it all kind of creates its own unique look. However, I think with the combination of some of those characteristics you are able to accurately emulate film and I'm going to show you four methods of doing so. The first way is the way that I color using my custom power grid and LUT, but I'm also going to present three other methods, two free ways of doing so with just using the free version of DaVinci Resolve, and the last way is going to be using a film emulation plugin called Dehancer. And the goal of all this is just kind of present you with options for film emulation and let you decide what's best for your budget and your workflow. But let's go ahead and get started with my method. So after you've purchased and downloaded the power grid and LUT and you've unzipped everything, you're going to be left with these two subfolders. You're going to firstly want to go into the LUT and go ahead and copy that. Then you're going to go into DaVinci Resolve, Project Settings, Color Management. You can open up the LUT folder. Then here you can create a subfolder for my LUTs and any future LUTs I potentially come out with. Paste that in there and update lists and save that. Next, you're going to head over to Gallery, and you're going to go ahead and import my Power Grade, which is found in the Power Grade folder. And both of these are the same thing, but in case one of them doesn't work, use the other one. Now that that's loaded in, you can go ahead, right click, and apply grade. Next, you're going to go over here to the LUT compound node, and place my LUT in there. This LUT is expecting a Rec. 709 input, which is why I have a color space transform here. Um, but next, after that, the last thing you need to do is head over to Conversion. And this is where you're going to input your color space and gamma and your camera and your camera profile that you shot on is going to dictate what you're going to put in here. But if you are using F-Log footage, you don't need to do anything. This power grid is already configured to that because that's what I use. And the reason we're converting our footage into Airy Log C is because that's probably the best log profile to work on. And that's where everything here is working under. So after that, now you're all set up and ready to go. First thing I'd suggest you do is head over to exposure and white balance and color correct your footage. After that you can go ahead and choose what film characteristics you want to add. Firstly we have grain and if we actually go into this compound node you see that we have two nodes for either 16 mil or 35 mil grain and if we go into them there are different softness, detail, and grain settings for each. I am using the grain within DaVinci Resolve, but if you don't have the full studio version I'm going to leave a link in the description to a site that will provide you with free foam grain. Next, we do have halation, and same as a grain, there are two nodes for whichever look you're going for, both 16 mil and 35 mil, just depends which you wanna end up using. Next, you do have a Promist node that will add a glow and soften up your footage a little bit, like a Promist or a diffusion filter. You have uh, daylight balance warmth if you wanna add that. Then you have color density, and the LUT itself does have some subtractive color built into it, but in case you want more, especially if you're looking to saturate your footage some more, this is here for you to decide if the footage needs it. Then you have vignette, you have dust, gate weave, and film breath. And these are just film characteristics that you'd find, let's say, if you're looking at the film through a projector. Now that you're done choosing, you can go ahead and move over to the saturation node. And I know a lot of times we do think film is super saturated, but 
most times it's down to just the color density and the richness of the colors but sometimes it's just fun adding in some saturation now these last couple nodes are just kind of to help with your contrast and exposure i like a very contrasty image but if you don't that's why this is here for this will lower the contrast and bring up some of your blacks and your shadows and then these two are to help just further get kind of like that faded film look Next, and probably my favorite part of my power grade is this looks node. Here, I've basically created three different color grades or looks based off of music videos or films where I really like the color grading. And I've worked to making sure they each work in pretty much every lighting scenario and are also balanced for skin tones. They're all also set to 50% key output. So if you go over to this key tab and go to key output, you can either increase or decrease the intensity of the look. And that's basically what you're getting with this power grade. And you don't necessarily need to use my LUT with it. You can experiment with other LUTs that you may have. And just like with all LUTs, just make sure you conform your footage to whatever the LUT is expecting. And also what you can do so you don't have to keep inputting my LUT every time is just create your own power grade now with the footage that you use the most. Grab that still and save that. And now you have a power grade where you don't have to keep adding on the LUT. Now I'm going to show you an instance where DaVinci's Color Space Transform doesn't include the color space and gamma for your footage. So let's head over over here and this is DJI Osmo Pocket 2 footage and we're going to go ahead and apply the power grade. Now the footage doesn't necessarily look bad but it's not the way I intend it to look. So we're going to go ahead and add a Syria node before this conversion and we're going to go to the Color Space Transform and we're going to switch this to Rec 709. So now here, all we have to do is convert our decent alike footage into Rec. 709. And I'm going to do that using a conversion LUT that I found online called GC Titan Cine Alike D to Rec. 709. And once you add that, the footage is now looking the way it's meant to. And let me go ahead and switch this just because I think Tungsten Blue works better for this footage. But yeah, this goes for basically using any type of LUT. If you can't use a color space transform within DaVinci, use a conversion LUT. So we're going to go ahead and create eight other nodes. You can right click, add node and add serial. I'm going to use a keyboard shortcut of alt s to create the rest. And we're going to label this last one LUT. And this is where we're going to place the film print emulation LUT found within DaVinci Resolve. And you can just go over here to film looks. And you're going to be looking at these last six. Try them out and see which one you like. I'm just going to use this last one. And at first glance, it doesn't look that bad on your footage but there is a proper way of using the slut and we're going to label this CST and we're going to drop a color space transform on here and you're going to input the color space and gamma of your footage and this is essentially dictated by your camera and camera profile that you shot with and if you need help trying to figure this out a quick google search should point you in the right direction this is Fujifilm footage so I'm going to use Rec 2020 and Fujifilm F-Log and as for your output color space, you're going to put in Rec. 709 and your output gamma is going to be your Cineon film log. Because this is a film print emulation and it's expecting a Cineon input. Alternatively, you can also use Airy Log C here. It kind of just depends on the footage, but sometimes I find when you're dealing with overexposed footage, Airy Log C kind of puts your image in a better place to start with. But for the sake of this video, we're going to use Cineon Film Log. Now, if we look over here, you can see that we're getting some weird artifacting with this pink light. And to fix that, we're going to head over to Gamut Mapping. And we're going to choose Saturation Compression. And that should take care of any issues you have in relation to that. So if I toggle this node on and off, you can see that our footage looks a lot more balanced. And overall, just looks better. Now, let's get into the rest of the node structure and... When dealing with these nodes, order of operation matters a lot and people will have different orders of doing these. For me, these last two nodes, I'm going to make these my color correction nodes. So this is going to be my exposure and this is going to be my white balance node. So you can fix any exposure issues you have here. For this footage, I think I'm just going to drop down the offset. Bring the gamma up a little bit. 
and add in some contrast somewhere around there now onto white balance i do tend to not only use this to fix any white balance issues with my footage and will kind of push the image into the direction i want it to look so i'm actually gonna go ahead and add a greenish orange tint to the footage just because this is a subway and i think it fits the look that i'm going for but now let's actually get into the film characteristics and this first one we're gonna label softness we're going to go ahead and add a Gaussian blur here. And depending on the look that you're going for, whether it's 16 mil, 8 mil, 35 mil, you're going to increase or decrease your desired liking. I think if you're going for more of a 16 mil look, I'd probably leave it somewhere around 150. And for 35 mil, maybe 50 or 80, somewhere around there. I'm going to leave this just at 120. And onto this next node, this is going to be our grain. Now I'm going to be using the grain within DaVinci Resolve but this is only available with the studio version. So if you don't have the full version, feel free to replace this with whatever grain you have or just completely delete this note and use the free grain overlay that I've linked down in the description. But I do really like DaVinci's grain. Let me just mess around with the settings and put it where I like them to be. I think I'm gonna leave it around there. Next note is gonna be our halation. So we're gonna add a serial alongside this one and we're gonna turn this into a compound node. We can label that halation. Open that up. We're gonna bring this node up here and create a layer node. You're gonna turn the composite mode of this to add and we're gonna add a serial node after this. Next thing is we're going to add a color space transform to this first node and one to this last one. So let's go over to this first node and we're going to change the input gamma to whatever your gamma is. So mine is F log and the output gamma is going to be linear. And vice versa with this node, our input is going to be linear and our output is going to be F log. So now let's actually get into creating the halation. Now we're going to go into our curves and I have seen two different ways of doing this. I'm going to show you both of them, but the first one drag this down place a point somewhere around there you don't have to be specific and we're going to lift this up then we're going to go over to our blur section and we're going to unleak these and you're going to raise the red and the green and you can lower or raise the blue depending on your liking i'm going to raise this up a little bit more i think i'm leave it somewhere around there and we've gotten some pretty nice halation going on. Now, the other curve that you can also try out and see if you like it, you're gonna bring this down, we're gonna place one somewhere around here, and we're gonna lift this up. Now, as you can see, this is a lot stronger than the last version, and this won't necessarily work with every type of footage, but see which one you like best. I like the more subtle halation, so we're gonna go back to the first curve, and leave it somewhere around there. Now the next node is gonna be our vignette. Now there is a vignette effect that we can use, but I find it to be really hard to get a usable result out of it. So the easiest way for me that I've learned to do it is we're gonna go over to our power windows and we're gonna choose a circle and we're just gonna place this all the way outside of our footage and then soften this up as much as we can. And we're gonna invert that. We're gonna go over to our primaries and drop the offset. And you can see, actually, you can see that we're getting pretty solid vignette without it being too overpowering. This last note is gonna be our dust damage and we can use an effects called film damage. You can apply that. And the only one we're going to be using is dirt. So we can disable this and change all of these values to zero. So now that we've gotten rid of everything else, we just have the dirt and we're going to change the color to white, change the density to one, change, also change the dirt size to one, dirt blur to zero, and dirt seed, you can play around with these. We're just going to use one. And that's just going to add a subtle dirt effect to our footage. I think these are essentially my favorite film characteristics to mimic with my footage. And with that, that's pretty much it.
This next method I'm going to show you is using a power grade created by Juan Milara, who is an extremely talented colorist who I've learned a lot from. And he has a couple film print emulation power grades, but also want to introduce those who haven't heard of it already, Cineprint 16 by Tom Bowles, which is another extremely powerful film emulation tool. But for today, I'm going to be using this Kodak 2383 power grade, which is pay what you want. So we're going to take this and incorporate it into the same workflow we used for the last method. So now make sure you have the power grade imported. And what we're actually going to do is we're going to copy all the settings we did here because the power grade is only for our color. So we can go ahead and right click on our image and press grab still. And what this is going to do is just copy our node structure and everything we did within them. And we're going to head over to our new footage and we're going to apply that and we're going to reset this and we can go ahead and drag this down here and we're just going to place the power grade in place of our LUT. And my DaVinci Resolve is bugging out a little bit right now, but I'm going to go ahead and just turn all of the new nodes that we got into a compound node. And then this is going to be our final node and we can go ahead and change this to power grade. So now we can go into the power grade and essentially this is just a rebuilt version of the LUT we use in the last method. But what this will actually do is allow you more flexibility with what you want and you can actually go in and see the characteristics of the film print and you can learn from it and play around with them to get more of the look that you might be going for. Now the way I would add in contrast is go into this curve and what we're going to do is turn on edible splines. And here you can just adjust the contrast of the LUT. Now, all of the settings from the last method carried over into our exposure, so we can reset that and come back to the curve. Now we can actually play around with it some more. And I think I'm going to leave it somewhere right there. But now the last thing is this D55 white point, and this is just daylight balance temperature that comes with the film print. So you can go ahead and turn that on and we'll go back. I'm actually going to leave the look that we did with the last footage. I'm going to leave that here. Maybe I'm going to turn that down. So I'm going to go to opacity, turn this down to 500. And there you go. Our halation looks pretty good. Maybe it might be a little too strong. So I'm going to go into our halation and go into the curve. I'm going to turn off edible splines and we're just going to lower this a little bit just so it's more of a subtle effect and I think right there looks good. I think this is a better method of going about film emulation than just using the DaVinci LUT just because it gives you more flexibility. They will both um, provide you with very similar results but I just wanted to showcase it in case you're not a fan of what the DaVinci LUT is providing you with. Now this last method is going to be using a plugin called Dehancer, and I think this is a great option for those that don't really want to be putting in all the work yourself and just have like a one-click solution. I'm not going to walk you through the entire program, I'm kind of just going to do an overview of it, but you do have different camera profiles, so I'm going to go ahead and choose Fujifilm, XC3, and F-Log. And you basically get everything you need for film emulation. You get the film stock, you get the film grain, you get the halation, you get the bloom, vignette, film breath, gate weave, all that good stuff. And I believe it comes with around 64 film profiles that are based off of motion picture film and photo film stocks. And they're constantly adding new ones too. So I'd imagine this is only going to get bigger. I'm going to choose CineSolo 800T. And this slider just mimics the push and pull exposure process. You get a lot of options for messing around with your contrast and your exposure. However, I do find that my footage whenever using Dehancer, it kind of always ends up crushing my blacks and you can kind of see it here that my blacks look way crushed and then I end up having to move up my black point, but it makes the footage look a little, a little weird, but it might just be me using it incorrectly. I have found that instead of using the camera profile, I'll choose Rec. 709 and prior to this node, we're going to add a color space transform and essentially just convert our footage to Rec. 709. And I find that this kind of helps 
give my footage a better look. But anyways, you get a lot of other options, color density, saturation, you get color head, which is basically a way to give your footage a look using a method that was used with film in the past. And probably my favorite part about Dehancer is the film grain. Now apparently they have their own algorithm for applying film grain in a way that works with the footage rather than just overlaying on top of it. And I just really like the texture that it gives. So now we can move into halation and right off the bat I'm going to tell you I do have to tinker a lot with this to get a result that I'm happy with which is why I kind of just do it my own way. But let me just try and fix this up so you can see what kind of look you can get out of it. You can see we're getting pretty decent halation around lights. And it's great that you get the option to really dial in the look that you want. Next we have Bloom and this will just give your highlights and footage a bit of a glow. That works in some cases but in other cases I think it looks way too strong. This plugin does come at a C price of $400 but for the price I don't think you're going to find a better film emulation program. And although I do think for most people you're better off doing it yourself, this might be the better option for you. Especially if you need to colorate the film look as quick as possible. If you are going to be buying it, I was able to get a 10% off code for you guys. So just use code SET at checkout and yeah, you'll get 10% off. I'm going to give you a quick tip on exporting footage when you have grain on it. And as we all know, YouTube's compression usually really kills the look of grain. First, I'd say use 4K footage and export a 4K because YouTube's compression isn't as bad on 4K footage as it is on 1080p. So if your timeline resolution is set at 4K and your export resolution is at 4K, you can go ahead down here to quality and you can restrict this to 100,000. And then this way your quality is high enough that YouTube's compression won't entirely kill your grain. Now let's actually go ahead and look at a comparison of the four methods I've shown you today. And each were balanced with the same exact exposure and white balance node. So any difference in color is just the way the method interprets the colors in the scene. But again, the reason I created this video in this way is because I wanted it to showcase different methods of achieving film emulation and not let this just be an ad for my power grade and my LUT. And then that way you can make the decision yourself of which way is more ideal for you. But thank you for watching. Hopefully this video was informative and... I'll see you in the next one.